Hello. Have you ever lived in a cold area? Me neither, but have you ever wondered how they manage to the snow there? It's quite common for trucks to start salting or even sanding the streets after a snowfall to prevent ice from building up and getting in the way of cars. But why does this work? Let's find out. Today we're going to answer which substance will make ice melt faster. Will it be salt, sugar, or maybe even nothing at all? I personally believe that either the salt or the sugar will melt the ice faster due to the fact that I have seen regular ice melt and it takes a long time. <laughs> You will need the following items if you plan on doing this experiment with me. Three identical bowls, preferably not white so you can actually see the ice cubes. Nine similarly shaped ice cubes. Salt. <laughs> I used Himalayan because pink salt is superior. There was no regular salt available. Sugar. One half teaspoon measuring spoon. Measuring cup. Use one with milliliter labels attached to it. You'll see why soon. A refrigerator and a timer. Additionally, you can use a pencil paper and tape to label your bowls unless you're able to tell the difference between salt and sugar let's put these items into action shall we place three ice cubes into each bowl and form a triangle shape with them caress them nicely before they become nothing but a puddle sprinkle one half teaspoon of salt into one bowl and half teaspoon of sugar into the second bowl do not put anything into the third bowl if we put salt and sugar in it that would defeat the whole purpose of the experiment now wouldn't it place the three bowls into the refrigerator preferably on an empty shelf so you don't stack them and leave them be. Why are we doing this in the fridge instead of out in the sun like mother nature intended? Well, if you live out in a desert like we do, the sun will melt those ice cubes in three minutes tops and then melt the bowls themselves. How are we supposed to know if the ice melted because of the substance or the sun? We don't, so we put them in a cozy, cold place. Now we check on them every hour or so until at least one of the bowls has been half melted. This can take around two to four hours, so in the meantime, let's talk about chemistry. Freezing point is the temperature in which a liquid becomes a solid, 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In a freezing point depression, the freezing point drops, turning the solid back into the liquid. In most situations, the way to do this is to heat it up, such as the sun. But in freezing temperatures, it's still possible to cause a freezing point depression. When you put a small, non-volatile substance, such as salt, onto the solid, the same thing happens. This is helpful when you're in a snowy area. Ah, time's up. Place all three bowls in a room temperature area. Pick one bowl to measure. Let's take the sugar bowl and be sure to filter out the ice to get as much water as you can. Then record your results. Do the same thing with the rest of the bowls, but be sure to empty the measuring cup. Disclaimer, do not drink salt water. It left a terrible taste in my mouth. Let's check the results, shall we? After about two hours in the fridge, the salt ended up demolishing the water, melting a total of 30 milliliters. I guess Himalayan salt really is superior, isn't it? The sugar melted a good amount, but was fairly slow with the time we gave it, and as expected, with no substance, the ice can only melt so much. I promise there is actual water in there. I checked. The amount melted goes as follows. Pretty cool, huh? Now, here is where I messed up just a little bit. I was supposed to wait for the rest of the ice to melt in room temperature, then measure how much ice was left to get the total amount. That way, we can see just how effective the substances really were. Except I waited overnight, and the water evaporated the next morning. There was barely any left. Why is that? Say it with me, kids. We live in a desert. So the amount remaining and the total amount won't be accurate at all, but here was the data I collected. <laughs> What we can conclude is that salt is the superior option when it comes to melting ice efficiently, especially when you live in a colder climate. Now, grab a jar of salt and sprinkle them on your enemies to make sure they can melt faster. Disclaimer, we do not encourage the use of salt to pour on your enemies. Enemies are not like ice, they cannot melt. Alright, I'll actually be serious. You've seen the results, but you're not sure why it works. I'll explain. When salt is mixed with water, it's an example of a chemical solution. Salt is a solute, and water is the solvent. The solute dissolves into the solvent because their chemistry is much greater together than when they're alone. That's why it's called chemistry, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why the salt and water's chemistry is so great is because water is partially polarized. Its hydrogen ends are partially positive charged, while oxygen is partially negative charged. It's much easier for the salt to dissolve into the water and create the solution. That was why the salt melted it so quickly. I imagine the sugar is similar to the salt, but it doesn't have that same chemistry as before. But I guess we'll never know. One more example of a chemical 
medical solution before we bid our ways. There's this bomb. If I were to mix a set of acids and bases, I could make it explode right now, creating a splendid chemical reaction. It would be quite dangerous, but what's life Stop. without what a little are you doing? This is not I'm part of the presentation. Get right out of my house. This is the end of the presentation.